Wednesday Night Live and time for the Bafo Show. Tonight, Bafo in the Street meets a barista who dates a wig shipper. From Comic-Con LA, voice of Disney Park's Yeni Alvarez, an anomalous cosplayer. News from the Metaverse and Barely News. Here he is, the mayor of the Metaverse, Bafo the Bear. How you doing, everybody? Baffle the Bear here. It is Wednesday, March 9th, 2022. Can you believe it's March already? Oh, my goodness. This year is just flying by. We are live uh, once again on uh, all the platforms right here on YouTube and uh, Twitch and Twitter and Facebook Live. Um, I got a bone to pick with you. It's all about media bias. Everywhere you look, bears are the bad guys in the media. Look at this story. She's in an outhouse, which is located in the woods, which if you've ever heard a joke about bears, that's where we crap, in the woods. So this woman sits down on the outhouse. Oh, something bit my butt. I opened the seat and there was a bear face right there. Hello, bears live and shit in the woods. What are you complaining about, lady? The bear had made a den inside your, your outhouse. And then you sit there and do your business into his house. You're lucky all he did was bite your ass. And now the bear is the bad guy? Come on. What if I came to your house and shit down your chimney? You'd be the bad guy? I don't think so. We have to share the world with animals. How bad does it have to be for you to be happy to make your house literally inside an outhouse? The bear probably had a rough year, you know? Uh, uh, COVID has changed everything, even for bears in the woods. This poor bear is just sitting in his house, minding his own business, and all of a sudden the lights go out and she's dropping a deuce in his living room, right on the coffee table. That's not cool. Not cool. The bear is not the bad guy in this. I'm not saying the woman is the bad guy either. There's no bad guys. Everybody poops. It's a good book. You should read it. Although I would have loved to see the woman's face. Right, you go out there, you you know, you got your <laughs> sit down, you're getting ready to read the sports page and a bear bites you. <laughs> Come on. That's when you wish there were cameras everywhere. So be a little more considerate when you're thinking of bears and you're in the woods. And just take a quick look around before you drop one. That's all I'm saying. Don't always rush to judgment and assume that the bears are the problem. Sometimes it's the people that are the problem. And if we can all get together and all work together, the world will be a more harmonious and lovely and wonderful place to go to the bathroom. All right. Back in December, we had the first Comic-Con that's been held in two years here in Los Angeles, Comic-Con LA at the big convention center downtown. And we were there on the floor doing live interviews with a bunch of really funny people. Like a voice you all know, but you don't know you know, Yeti Alvarez. Live, the Baffle the Bear program from the floor of the West Hall here at LA Comic-Con 2021. Today, we have a very special guest with us, the voice, the Spanish voice, of Disneyland Parks Worldwide, it's Yanni Alvarez. Now, hi, Bafo. Hi, how are you? I'm excited to be here and meet you in person. <laughs> I'm sure it must be a thrill for you. It is. To see someone of my, I, I guess the word is stature, uh, in person. It is. Um, I follow you on all your social media channels. Thank you. Uh, I, I know you've worked with everybody in Hollywood Pretty and much. hopefully someday with me. Well, I think this qualifies as work because I'm not enjoying it. I don't know about you. I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, when I say you're the voice of Disney Parks... Por favor, mantengan las manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del vehículo y cuida sus pequeñitos. Gracias. Oh, now I get it. All right, wonderful. And also Rosita. Rosita, the talking it's, bird. It's the, um, the talking bird that flew from the Tiki Room and now lives right next to the Jungle, uh, jungle Cruise. Uh -huh. And she tells jokes all day long. What's the funniest thing you've ever done in real life? I don't, what do you mean the funniest thing? Uh, a malapropism, a saying something one way when because you're trilingual, as I understand. I am. Uh, Italian? Spanish and English. Right. So I, I would imagine words get jumbled up in your head all the time. I do. I mean... Uh, I speak one language. Uh, a little bear, but mostly English, and sometimes I'll get tongue-tied. So I'll mix, like, um, I don't know, ride the pony in the direction it's going, or walk the pony in the direction it's going, or don't... It's actually don't ride, feed, uh, it's actually dead ride the horse in the direction it's going. You don't, what about don't feed a you dead don't horse ride in the a mouth? pony unless you're six years old. If you're a grown-up and you are lost in like the woods ponies. in some way and the horse is going that way, 
get on it, ride with it, right? Uh, do you also feed dead horses in the mouth? Why would you feed a dead horse? You never know. Maybe they're just stunned. I'm very sci-fi. I like to think that I could bring him back to life. Is that your big thing? Is that your big thing here at Comic-Con? Sci-fi stuff? Um, actually, no. I came because I do a lot of uh, animation and video games, and my video game, After the Fall, is dropping today. Thank you for having me here, because I would love to talk to you about that. It's called After the Fall? It's called After the Fall. It's an, um, a frozen, apocalyptic um, world where human beings messed up the earth of course and now we have to find the snow breed and get the juice from them in order to keep things warmed up and it has like a 1980s feel the good thing about this game is that it's cross-platform so if people from pc and from oculus quest and all these different uh platforms can play no together. everyone together yes coming which, together on different platforms so it's it's, you can get uh, you can get four people and you can play together in a group or like different people all over the world like it's 32 actors at the same time playing in the same world but you can play with your friends and whether you have a pc or an oculus quest it, it's all in the same world together is there nothing technology can't do it's very impressive you play luna gonzalez i do what kind of girl like is she's this a, a badass. Is she a 1980s girl? This happens in the she's 1980s? A, she's a 1980s badass. She gives out the missions right. and she checks in on you over the, the, the course of the game. Uh, so you're like a hot mommy, right? You tell someone to do well, they something. they do call her the And matriarch. then you check in over and over again. You're a space milf. <laughs> the character is a space milf, which I'm sure will make her very popular, <laughs> right? I'll take it. Wow. Maybe we get to play together. Can you imagine? Playing a video game with the actual actor that was in it? Well, you can. Yeah, I'm a total gamer. With Oculus. The, after the Fall is the name of it, right? Yes, After uh, the Fall. All right, and, and you are... The, Luna Gonzalez. No, I was going to... Your real life name. Oh, Jenny Alvarez. Yeah, the voice of Thank Disney you. Parks. Thank you for and having Luna me, And Luna Gonzalez from After the Fall. I'm Bafo the Bear. We are live here at Comic-Con LA all weekend long. Bafo. <laughs> to talk to some of the cosplayers there. Now, if you don't know what cosplayers are, they're people who dress up as characters. That's not them, but characters from animation or films. Uh, it's called cosplay. And there were some really interesting cosplayers there. Uh, we've been here all weekend long talking to uh, voiceover celebrities, uh, cosplayers, uh, and just random uh, strange folks wandering the halls as if they were looking for their mommy. I don't know which one of the categories our next guest falls into. What is your name? My name is Elisa. Elisa? Mm -hmm. I am a character named Mina Oshido from an anime manga series called My Hero Academia. My Hero Academia? Mm -hmm. My hero is a student in hero school. <laughs> I see. Yeah, because no matter what galaxy or universe you happen to be in, People are people, Gorgons and Gorgons, uh, the alien thing that you said are mm -hmm. them. Uh, individuality and expressing yourself is what makes you feel good. I mean, look around this joint. You've got grown-ups walking around with kids in monkey suits on chains. You've got guys dressed up as Transformers. Right. And look, there's a dinosaur, uh, there's a guy in purple pajamas, and a guy with a fanny pack. And I don't know of the three of them, which is the more outlandish outfit. And everyone coming together in peace and harmony, it just thrills me. Are you single or connected with someone? I am single. Okay. Do you think it's harder to hook up at an anime convention or at a Comic-Con? Harder to hook up. Anime, Comic-Con. Probably Comic-Con. Why? Many more different interests there. But anime, it's all... Boom. Yep. <laughs> Time once again to thank our sponsor, Cancun Cards. This time next week, we're going to be giving away a trip to here. Once again, it's time for... News from the Metaverse! Let us Finally, after years of complaints and frankly, worry from people all over the country, the folks at M&M's are relaunching their characters. Yeah, the whole gang of M&M characters, green, blue, yellow, whatever the colors are, they're getting a modern makeover 
for a more progressive and dynamic world. And I know I speak for all Eminem fans everywhere to say it is about time. The reason they've done this is because Mars Eminem has received criticism about the green Eminem's sexy characterization. Some parent, I'm guessing, took the time out of their busy day to write a letter to the M&M's people saying, the green M&M is too sexualized. My children are being scandalized because the green M&M is too sexy. If you're writing letters to M&M characters, I think that's good parenting. Because you start letting things go, it snowballs. One day, it's a sexy green M&M. The next day, it's a Snickers bar slapping your ass. The next thing you know, there's candy canes smacking you and trying to get in your pants. No good. You gotta stop them at the beginning. Now, Ms. Green is not overly sexualized. They're taking her go-go boots away and they're putting her in sneakers. I've known her forever. I mean, I, I knew her back when she was wearing Birkenstocks, dancing in Hate ashbury and partying with the dead. This is extremely important. As a matter of fact, if I was teaching, uh, this would be on the quiz. Yeah. Well, how, well, how many different shoe styles has Miss Green Eminem had over the years? She started with the Bergenstocks. Then she had the clogs in the 70s. She was a backup singer for ABBA. A lot of people don't know that. Now she's got cool sneakers because everybody loves Skechers. Not a sponsor just a fan. And they've announced a new friendship between the green and the brown M&M, both female M&Ms, of course. I mean, we all know that, right? You could wake me up at four o'clock in the morning and say, quick, which color M&Ms are the females? And I would say, well, obviously, the green and the brown. There's a tweet uh, from last year, look at them. They're holding hands on the beach as if they were like a lesbian couple. Isn't that the ultimate threesome? You and a couple of M&Ms? It melts in your mouth, not in your head. They're gonna come together to be a force supporting women. Together, throwing shine, not shade. Isn't that beautiful? If you really look and drill down, you'll realize that there's so much trouble in the world because the M&Ms have been out of step with society. So now, the two female M&Ms are gonna be sisters. Like the, that movie, The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. This is the sisterhood of the uh, candy-coated chocolate things. Uh, the orange M&M is evidently the most popular M&M with Gen Z because the orange M&M, as we all know, is the most anxious M&M. Yeah, so they're giving him new shoes, they're giving him sneakers, but they'll be tied to show that he's in control because the orange M&M is the one that resonates most strongly with Gen Z. So all you Gen Z kids out there in the metaverse, you can rest assured that the M&M's people have a candy specifically targeted to what they think your problem is. I bet it's relieving some of your anxiety. And if it is, you can thank the people at M&M's. And I think we all owe the people at M&M a huge debt of gratitude. Because without them redefining the characters of these fictional talking candies, the world was headed for a dumpster fire. And now, everything is coming up candy. And that's today's News from the Metaverse. Emily. Why did you move to California from Washington? I'm an actor. What talents do you have that might be appropriate for a show of my ilk? Well, I danced for like nine years. I did competitive dance, so. I got that up my sleeve. And you work at, here at Starbucks, right? I work here at Starbucks. Could you improvise for me a TikTok Starbucks dance? <laughs> right here, right now. <laughs> you gotta check out the register. Uh -huh. You gotta like, pour the milk. Yeah. <laughs> See the milk. Right. Pour the drink. Uh-huh. <laughs> Keep pouring the drink. <laughs> and then do with the drink. You have to drink you it. You gotta drink the drink. Very good. There we go. That's excellent. <laughs> that was not good, but I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, how long have you been working here at Starbucks? <laughs> like a month. <laughs> Do you like it? I love it. Everyone is so friendly and so wonderful. There must be some jerks that come in here, though. I mean, every once in a while, I think you get someone who's not a bad day, but everyone who works here is really awesome. I would assume that there are more cranky people in the morning because they haven't had their coffee yet. Cranky? I don't know if I'd say cranky, but people are less talkative in the morning. 
which I understand. Like, I'm not a morning person. You right. Know? I force myself to be a morning person. <laughs> yeah, once I go to sleep, I stay asleep for three months. <laughs> I um, respect that. I wish I could do that. Have you had any acting uh, roles that we would have seen on television or in the movies yet? Nothing yet, but... Maybe pretty soon, you might. I guarantee you, you're going to be on my channel. <laughs> uh, what celebrity do people tell you that you look like? I've gotten a young Amy Adams. Like yes. if you had traveled back in time, yeah. like seven years. Totally, something like that. Okay. The last text you received, what does it say? <laughs> the last text I received? Yeah. Oh, great. It's from my boyfriend um, telling me that he ripped his pants while at work. What the hell like, is he texting you that for? He squatted and then he got still ripped his pants. Is he fat? No, he's actually not. He's like really, like really ripped. He like goes to the gym every night. Where does he work? Uh, he works at a wig shop. A wig shop? Wig shop. Yeah, they ship wigs. I don't think, I don't think I've ever heard of that <laughs> right? before. Right? It's like it's a cool, it's a cool job. It's like he's uh, a wig shipper. He's a wig shipper. So they like ship them out to people across the country and across the world. Everyone needs a good wig. I know, right? Your ultimate role. What would that be, Emily? So many. Honestly, I love roles that are just like juicy that I can sink my teeth into. So but like a steak, you would be a, yeah, you'd, I'd you'd be, be a I'd good be a steak. steak. For sure, yeah. Show me porterhouse. What? Show me a porterhouse steak. Oh, this I, is this is. I don't. I'm, I don't method eat acting. Meat, actually, so I, I've never eaten steak. Okay, a juicy roll that you would eat. Mm. Like a pie. Yeah. Oh, I love pie. Okay, act for me a, a, a strawberry pie. Like a slice of pie. Pies are happy. They're like this smiley. It works on a ginger, so I got the like strawberry, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that is our show for you tonight. A very special L.A. Comic-Con edition. We'll be showing more of the interviews we did at Comic-Con later on uh, this spring and summer. But for right now, I hope that satisfies your Comic-Con palette. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the program. We'll be back next week with more live phone calls and more Skypes and more Cancun vacation giveaways. Until then, I'm Bafo the Bear coming to you as the mayor of the metaverse. What is the metaverse? I don't know.